Okay. Um, farmers walk is a standard scene. It's in loads of competition that I'm fond of a friend. Um, the way I do it, firstly, like Rob said, the grip's a big issue. Okay? If you can't lift these weights, I mean, I, you know, in, in London last year we did basically 190 kilos in each hand. At the Arnolds we have to do a 400 kilo frame. Um, the weights are getting pretty crazy and strong now. Uh, and if you can't hold on to them, it doesn't matter how quickly you move, you're not going to finish it. So, grip, grip's a big issue. So what I try and do with my grip, apart from trying to get it stronger, Rather than holding the bars in your fingertips, you see a lot of people wrap their fingers around the bar and then lock in with the thumb. What how that does, as soon as you lift the weight, all the weight is going through your fingers and it's trying to open them up, which it will do even if you've got the strongest grip in the world. So what the, you see the top guys will do is put their palm underneath the bar, then wrap their fingers around and then the thumb locks in and as you lift, it'll twist. Without any weight on it's not, but it will twist and it bite into the calluses and go in. What happens then is that the, when you're moving, the weight is going through your palm rather than into your fingers. It's quite uncomfortable, um, but it's, it's a lot stronger yeah. grip. It takes a little while to get used to that, because the feeling of the, obviously the yeah, sensation Yeah, it's uncomfortable, that's, that's the thing. But once you've harnessed it, it, it's good. Especially like, like Lossie, you get some weight on there, when you put your hand through and you've got it on the palm, and you've got those calluses, those, that nice big thick bit of like flesh underneath the farmers. When you go to pick up the, the, the farmers, it, the weight almost sits it where you want it. So, you know, you're not using the fingers because obviously if it is for a long run or a turn, if that starts to fade, then you, you've still got your finger strength. But if it's just on fingers, where your fingers go, that's it. You know, it's, it's, it's down. And a lot of these competitions now, you know, it's one pick up and go, you know, some, some distance. And, and um, you know, that, that, if you, if you can't, can't keep it going, then uh, you lose some valuable points, so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's very easy in strongman to overtrain your grip as well because you do so many events that involve grip strength. I've actually backed off completely because I used to train my grip a lot to get it strong. But now I, I actually do farmer's walk with strength sometimes to, to develop my kind of endurance in my leg or just work on my speed because I, I've kind of got to the point where I've got to break things down so far to, to try at the top level. Like if you're 5% off your best, you get hammered. The guys are so good. Um, so you've got to try and do everything you can. And, and like for, for training for the Arnolds with a, a big 400 kilo frame, if I was doing 400 kilo frames week in, week out, my grip's going to be fatigued pretty quickly. So I tend to... I don't have much skin on your hands left, would you? The calluses, no. the build up the calluses. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, but Terry, but I actually file my calluses yeah. down. Yeah, a lot of Sorry to come off, Loz. A good tip with calluses, you know, we all get them with deadlifts and, and stuff. If you get some nice mold uh, sandpaper, roll it into a tube. And just take the tops off. Just take the tops off of the callus, just so it goes down to the skin. Not too much, not to make it sore. And then um, I tell you, um, rather than the, the, the red tiger balm, there's a white tiger balm. Put that into the hands. It's got like um, non alcohol or such in it, but it's got an astringent in it, which withdraws it up and makes it, it keeps it moist, also not so, not too moist. But um, it, or, or with the sandpaper, just take them, just take them down, just to the skin. Good little tip, and then they, then they don't tear. There's nothing that the farmers can hook onto that will tear a callus. There's, there's, yeah, I mean, there's certain times where you can't yeah. avoid tearing. Yeah. We, we did a team competition in the Ukraine, and I think out of 30 athletes, 27 of us tore our calluses because it was so humid. But if you look after your hands, you should, you, you're going to do it less often. It's just an important tip. I mean, yeah. he uses sandpaper, I just use a callus file. <laughs> I'm a sissy, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like just going through the grip again, right? Really focus on the grip at the start of your run. Put your hands right under, and then there's two ways of starting. Rob's can, Rob does a split start quite a lot like this, where you can get into a quick run straight away. It's a bit more difficult when it's really heavy. That's the only problem. Um, so if, when it's heavy, I tend to make sure you get up and running. I actually want him into that position, probably start to move forward. And then it's a bit like a sprint to you try and stay Once you're locked up, you need to keep your hips through. You see some guys that are cutting the ball like that. So we're going to try and keep your hips locked through and then work on fast leg pace up and then off. You ain't turning, Loss. Any tips to turn? No, wait, wait, I'll go through walking first. Okay, sorry, Loss. <laughs> two, two ways to do the walking. You can either go for the fast, short steps, um, which most people tend to prefer, especially the lighter body weight guys. 
um, like the end of the season and the one and five, uh, because you don't have the huge hips of us three. Um, he's trying to make it up. All I would like to tell you is the same with the yoke as well, is imagine you have a line along the floor, and you're going to try and focus on just quick steps along that line, okay? Same with the yoke as well, you're going to that position. The line on the floor, keep it going, and keep your feet quite narrow. On the yoke, I know I've gone off on a tangent a bit, but if you go for wide steps on the yoke, you stand like this, and you see a lot of people lift it like that, and then they walk like that. But the yoke starts to rock because you can, you're stepping to the side of the time, and the weight kind of pulls down and then you're all over the place. When you try to keep your legs quite close to the turn, you don't get any of that rock, so you will stay there, and then just go quickly. So you've got the small steps, work through it's fine. Guys like Terry, Rob, myself, Lucky we've got big, strong hips, we just run, basically. <laughs> he's kind of up, and he's bigger, longer strides. When you train farmers, don't try and go too heavy all the time. There's only one guy I know that can get away with training real heavy on farmers walking, and that's him. <laughs> but, every time, every time I've been to Terry's, and Terry's gone down to me, the, the weight, Terry, can you week in, week out farmers is unbelievable. Unbelievable. We we go up to maybe 150 at absolute max just for one ter, just for one 20 meter run. Uh, Terry came down last year, went up 20, 25 meters, turned with 150 kilos, he came back and, and just held it at the bop at the back and dropped him. And then we went up a bit more as well. It, 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 his grip is unbelievable. And but you've had a little bit of trouble with callus, going back to callus. What, what would you Yeah, well, I mean, exactly. you tear, what would you do? Well, I mean, I'd, a lot of the reason I tore my calluses at Worlds was because I wasn't taking good care of them. It is really important to keep them farmed down, I mean, even at the moment, they are well beyond where they should be. Yeah. But you can feel them on the log, can't yeah, you? Whenever really you pick up log, oh, you feel those calluses, and they're really stingy, but you keep them down to a nice, nice length, so that you can deal with them, don't better? Yeah, little tip for anyone going to a competition. Take some super glue with them. Yeah. I know it sounds really stupid, but if you do tear them off, but they don't come all the way off, you can sometimes yeah. stick them back down. Super glue was actually invented in the Vietnam War when the soldiers were in the front line being stitched up. You didn't have enough time to stitch up, so you used glue to stitch them up. And it, it, can, be, it can be used on the, on the skin. It stings like a yeah. devil, but um, you can, if you get it, you get it quick enough, yeah. you can glue them up, patch it back on you, you're good to go. And don't ever use new skin. No, because that really does That will make a, ma a grown man cry. Yeah. Especially if you've got the first aid lady goes, is that alright? Yeah. We're just, just going on training for farmers and yoke, okay? <laughs> These guys are absolutely right, you have to look after your hands. For training them, I would recommend you don't go too heavy. In the gym, I might go 140 max. The only time I go heavier is if I was training for the world's strongest man and I knew it was, we had to be farmers here. I would spend probably four to five weeks building up a farmer's walk, doing sets of three runs to work on the speed. I build the weight up. Uh, I probably still wouldn't even get to the weight of the competition um, until the competition. I know, like in my deadlifting and squatting and stuff, I know I'm strong enough to lift those weights. Um, so what I'm trying to do in the gym is get better at the event, get faster, which is so important now. I mean, you know, yoke is, all, all of us are very good at yoke. I did the yoke of World's Strongest Man against Mike Jenkins, and I, I actually finished and I was like, oh my God, I was slow. And I, I looked at the time, it was a decent time, a good result, but yeah. he was just so much quicker. And the standard just keeps getting better every year. So unless you're trying to get better at those events, at all the events, you can go backwards. I mean, Terry, when he came third the first time, was nowhere near as good as he was this year. And he'll tell you that every year, every year he's got better. Probably one year you had a bad year, but every year you've got better and better and stronger and stronger. But the standard just keeps getting better all the time. You have to find new ways of getting better. You can't just be satisfied with the level you're at. What, what have you guys done? Obviously, you've got the, that huge frame at Arnold's where you, you're up the ramp. It's a 400 plus frame. Have you sort of had to divert your training to make it different? Or, I know you've got a huge yeah, I mean, frame. The only thing I've done was at that time you come down, yeah. I went up to 390 yeah. just to test the weight more than anything. Just generally training stronger. I mean, I am a lot more sensible with my bench training than I used to be. I generally don't train as heavy as I used to. When I first started, I was like, oh, going heavier, heavier, heavier every week. Now I use the gym work, the, the place where I get stronger, 
yeah. and the event work is yeah. where I get technically yeah. better. I totally agree, events. that's key, isn't it? I think it showed at Worlds last year, you, you young, peaked well, yeah. whereas in the past you've kind of done your big lifting in the gym, yeah. you saved it for when it counted. Well, it goes back to what Lars was saying, the farmers were for the yoke of World's Strongest Man, it was 455 kilos in the final, and we had the car walk up at 440. <laughs> And I didn't go over 380 in training, and I only did that the once. Most of my training was around 350 kilos, just doing speed runs, doing multiple runs in one go, three or four runs. That's, that's getting fitness up as well. Yeah, though. fitness work and speed work, and obviously it's just. Pick, I mean, I think the most important thing is picking a weight that's a challenge. So the minute you see it gets to that point where it's challenging. Then it's the right way. It's yeah. enough. It needs to be a weight that you were going to finish. Yeah. You know, I, when I see, like, I, I don't look so much now, but in the past, when you look like it was training wrong, and they say 400 kilo yoke for three steps, to me that's not training. Yeah. You know, all right, you've gone and put it down. Yeah. It's not going to do much in the competition. You're better off dropping the weight down, doing three runs, you know, or even just one run where you're finishing the whole course. Because if you're not finishing a competition, you're going to come last. I think it's a big mistake a lot of people make with young farmers. The sort of root of heavy carrying things is they get into their head more weight means stronger. But what people forget is their speed events. When you go to competition, world well, strongest man, or even local stuff, it's not about whether you can carry the weight, it's how fast you can do it. And so many people sort of neglect that side of their training. You know, you, 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 know, you might be able to carry a 400 kilo super yard, but the key to it is being able to carry it fast. So you don't need to train at 400 kilos, you're better off training at 350. Fast. As long as you're strong enough to do the fast. If you're doing 350, 340 yoke weekly, you know, not on Saturdays, and you, you fluctuate from 300 to 320, 340, it, week in, week out, you come to competition, you've got a 380 competition, you're going to breeze it because you, your body's getting used to that weight. And because you're only going to, you're, you're, you're obviously going to be hyped from the competition anyway, you're going to, you're going to breeze it at a slightly heavier weight because you, you know your technique is actually. You know, tip top. So. I mean, I found a good, a good way of training my yoke is just train around 300 kilos and literally I'll do 520 metre runs in one go. Run 20 metres, put down, turn around, pick it straight back up and go back and I'll do five runs like that. Mary, yeah. stuff like that. By the fifth run, I'm absolutely destroyed and it's only 300 kilos, it's not a big weight. But it's, it's enough where... 100 metres. Yeah, training. exactly. I mean, 300 then starts feeling like it's 500 kilos, but you're less likely to hurt yourself with 300 kilos than a big weight. That's, that's my opinion. And also, it's conditioning work as well. I think that's a big thing. Like, it's, being, it's being sensible with your training. You know, if you're squatting and deadlifting and pressing in the gym, and then you're trying to do maximum weights on events on the weekends, your body's going to burn out very, very quickly. There's not many people that could cope with it. I certainly couldn't. I've tried before, it doesn't work. Um, and like Terry said, he's changed the way he trained and for the well, better. I had to. Yeah. I mean, I've had, I had in a space of about 18 month period, I had five muscle tears. So, you know, that was from years of going too heavy all the time. It does take its toll. Eventually, you've got to back it off that little bit and train smart. Yeah. Yeah, train clever. Right, you're going to do the block for them first? Yeah. Cool. Sorry, all right.